Today, I go over a material setup that shows the different layer heights of a model. And you can change the layer heights to see what a print will like look like before you actually print it. It'll go it'll have a different selection of different nozzle sizes. And you can choose basically what layer height you want to use and see what the model will look like. At, print it out before you actually print it. It doesn't really do the top very well, but anyway, I'll show you kind of what it does and how it works. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Kevin with Inventomark, and today I'm going to be going over a material for Blender Cycles that shows 3D printing layers and things like that. Uh, I've been wanting to do this type of a texture for a long time but I never could figure out how to go about implementing it or anything like that and someone on reddit actually posted something on this which looks pretty good it started out decent I mean it looks alright with the, what he has but he uh, wondered if anybody could had anything that worked better or if they could prove his or improve his so I saw that and I jumped right on it and I started working with it and I got it to work he had it all set up with everything and he included a blend file with it and I'll also include a I already did in the comment section of this post but I'll include it with the actual video comments down below if you just look and but anyway so I took his texture that he had it was basically it was just the wave texture with bands and a sine wave at a certain degree and angle that worked well with the power of divide and then I added the multiply to get it to look more kind of like a 3D like model the one that I have is one like that but Basically, all this really does is it adds a modifier to the displacement of the object. You can use whatever uh, main shader that you want for the main surface. That really doesn't matter. What matters is the uh, displacement here. And what I've actually done is make it so that you can change the layer height of the object you can use 0.1 millimeter layers, 0 0.2, 0.25. I've actually printed 0.25 a lot. That's what my 0.5 nozzle that I use. 0.3. I think it's up to pretty 0.4. If you have a one millimeter nozzle, you might want to print it 0.15. But it, no matter what size you size the model up the layers and everything stay the same like this Suzanne here that I just put on here for subdivided it's 28 millimeters by 2 mil two or 20 millimeters so it's basically 20 by 20 I'll go ahead and create a cube just to kinda make it 20 millimeters square just as another example and I'll put the same texture that we have on here and so you can kind of see put it in actual perspective view here and on the top I tried to get something to work it doesn't quite work that well but it does work. I was messing around with it and I don't know if it really is going to work that well or not but anyway you can kind of see that it has somewhat of a top layer. That's the hardest part is trying to get the top layer to work without affecting the side layers. Because you can go like that and but it also shows up on the side layers. So I tried to 
get that to not show up on here that much and still show up on top. Maybe if I change the color. We can kind of see that I have the layers on top here. And you can change the nozzle thickness. So if you're using a 0.2 nozzle, it'll show the it won't show the entire thing like the normal 3D print, but it's pretty close for what most people would need it to use it for. It'll just kind of show the layout of a typical layer thing on here. Even a one millimeter nozzle, which would be huge. But, <laughs> but most people print with the 0.4 nozzle and a 20 millimeter cube at 0.2 layer height. This is what it would look end up looking like. And it seems to work out pretty well for almost all objects. This is pretty shiny right here, but but it just kind of shows what something will look like with different sizes and everything. If you printed out a little Suzanne model, it would print out at that height and size. Because it's tiny compared to this. But if you see, it lines up just right through the entire model. And no matter what size you scale the model, the layer height always stays the same. And it shifts along with the actual object. And this is great for basically seeing what an object is going to look like before you print it. And I'm going to go ahead and import the 3D Benchy wherever it's at. This is the go-to model for almost anything. <laughs> but this is just model plain without the texture on it. And it looks pretty good in here, but when you add the texture to it, it's just kind of amazing because it actually shows up and looks like it would be 3D printed. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close to what the actual 3D print will look like, which I think is pretty cool because now you can actually get a reference to see what it would look like at different layer heights like at 0.1 millimeters layer height it's gonna look like that with especially like the ridges and things like that like you can see all that there and if you wanted to print it half a millimeter you'd see how there's only going to be so many of those things up here and the layer height how much it adjusts each one but the standard is 0.2 and when you change the nozzle diameter say you want to use a 0.2 nozzle it changes the pattern up on the on the flat surfaces on top it's got two different settings here it's got the nozzle and the layer height and that's actually in the model I put it over here it's got all this here I did this kinda backwards I didn't need to put all these multiplies in there I could have just put values in for each one of those so if you want to change it you could probably just do that and just put <laughs> values in but it works just kinda like it is it's pretty simple and the shader doesn't matter this is actually the PBR dielectric that Andrew Price made for just for most materials to make them look more realistic it works pretty good but you can use pretty much anything for the shader see if I wanted to get rid of that and just put a glossy shader in here it's just gonna change it that much do whatever color we want, make it a red.
you can't see it there, but or if you want to change this to a diffuse shader, let's do that. Make it red. I look pretty close. That shows the detail of everything and how it's going to work. Instead of slicing it in the software, it just kind of does it before you even get to the slicing software. You can kind of see where it's going to be at. That's with 0.4 layer height, which is a pretty, pretty steep layer height. I did measure it to each one to make sure that it was accurate because here let's say you got 0.2 millimeters layer height and we added a cube here let's make it 0.2 and just line it up you see that the layer height pretty close it's not 100 percent if you want to fine tune it and adjust it and make it better that'd be awesome but it seems to work so anyway that's pretty much all I had for this video I just wanted to kind of show this off and see if anybody can improve upon it to get it so that you can do the top layers better and maybe somehow get it so you can make it look like the actual print with the outline but I don't know how you would do that but somebody else might know and some way to maybe separate it from showing the ridges where'd it go might help if I had it actually selected <laughs> And the top layers I have it set to saw instead of sign because it makes it look more like a flat surface than a rounded surface. So when you change it back and forth, you can see. It just kind of puts lines like that. The only problem is when I move this over and change that, it makes it so you can see all those lines on the side here like that. And you don't, I don't really don't want to see that, so I'm choosing point nine something to make it better. But yeah, it seems to work. Anyway, thanks for watching.